Let's take another look at this binomial example with the MLE. But instead of thinking about it as binomial, let's think about it as six independent Bernoullis. Okay, so again, we, remember we had six shots, five of them make it in. So we could imagine like x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5 are all equal to one because we make it in, and then x6 is equal to zero. So we know that um, each one of these x's has a Bernoulli distribution with some unknown parameter p. p is the probability of making it in. All right, so we need the PMF of that Bernoulli distribution. So we know that that's just p to the x, whatever x we're talking about, times 1 minus p to the 1 minus x. Okay, so this is our PMF for each one of these x's, x1 through x6. So they're identically distributed, they all have this PMF or PDF. All right, um, we also said these are independent, so now when we wanna go to write down our likelihood function, we can just take the product of these PMFs. So we're looking for the likelihood of P given the data that we have collected. So we have of X1 through X6. And so that's the product of these PMFs. So we can go ahead and fill that in because we know what those are. So we have the product of p to the xi times 1 minus p to the 1 minus xi. Okay, but we know some things about exponents, right? So if we have this, the product of p to the xi, that's the same thing as p to the sum of the xi, and then 1 minus p to the sum of 1 minus xi. Okay, so there's our likelihood. We can go ahead and now take the log to get our log likelihood. So our log likelihood, if we're taking the log of this, we have sum of the xi times log of p. And then we have sum of the 1 minus xi times log of 1 minus p. All right, so if we contrast this to what we got on the MLE one, we were thinking about it as one binomial random variable rather than six Bernoulli random variables. We can say that these log likelihoods and these likelihoods are pretty similar. The only thing that is missing is that constant and choose x, right? But that was just a constant and if we're maximizing this log likelihood, it doesn't matter whether we have the constant in there or not, right? So if here's our likelihood, and then we add in a constant everywhere, we'll just be shifting that up by that amount, right? So the maximizer will still be here regardless of whether we have that constant in there or not. So what we see is really constants don't matter. The log likelihood will be the same. And so, um, I mean, the maximizer of the log likelihood will be the same. And so um, we can do this problem using Bernoulli or binomial and we'll get the same maximum likelihood estimate. So if we want, we could go ahead and finish this out. We could take the derivative of our likelihood, set that equal to zero, and then solve to get what P would be. So let's go ahead and do that.
So it's going to look very similar to the other one. So if you already got it, you can just get this part. All right, so we're looking for the derivative with respect to p of our log likelihood. So we're taking the derivative of this. And again, we know when we take the derivative of this with respect to p, the sum of xi, that's a constant. And then here is p, that's what we're taking the derivative with respect to. So we have sum of the xi divided by p. And then we have sum of the 1 minus xi divided by 1 minus p. And again, we multiply by negative 1. So if we want, we could just put that negative sign there. OK. So again, we got that negative sign because the derivative of log of 1 minus p is 1 over, my, is 1, over 1 minus p. And then we have to use the chain rule, get the derivative of the inside part. So that's how we get the negative sign. All right, so here's the first derivative of our log likelihood. We can go ahead and set that equal to zero. Okay, so if we set it equal to zero, we have the sum of the xi over p equals the sum of the one minus xi over one minus p. All right, so we can go ahead, cross multiply, so we have 1 minus p times sum of the xi, and that's equal to p times the sum of the 1 minus xi. Okay, so go ahead and distribute these things. So we have sum of the xi minus p times sum of the xi, and then we have p times, okay, let's split this piece up as well. So if we're adding up 1, six times and subtracting off the xi's, that's the same thing as doing the sum of one, six times, minus the sum of the xi's. Okay, so let's distribute that p across now. So this is equal to p, if we add up one six times, that's six, right? So we have six p minus p times the sum of the xi's. Okay, so now we can see, compare right hand, left hand side, we have minus p times some of the xi's both sides. Cancel those out. So that just leaves some of the xi's equals six over p. All right. So we said that we're trying to solve for p, so let's solve for p. So then that means that if we solve for p, p is equal to some of the xi's over six. So that is our maximum likelihood estimator. And we can go ahead and plug in what the sum of the xi's is, that's five, and we have six plugged in there. So again, we get p hat equals 5, 6. So just like we did in the binomial example.